two, three, and four. lick first of all the chords the chords as always are the most important in this particular portion of the song the chords are really easy there's only three of them one two three D minor one. B flat C for two bars one more time D minor the one chord the B flat and the C Now you should know that the D minor and the B flat chords are very close. A D minor is spelled D, F, and A. A B flat chord is spelled B flat, D, and F. So the D and F are common and actually if you take the A and if you raise it, lo and behold we have a B flat chord. Furthermore, if you put the B flat in the bass and then put the D, D minor triad on top, you got a B flat major seven chord, so the two chords are very close to being the same thing. And the way Mark Knopfler treats it is basically D minor ideas over those two chords and its two measures, and then usually a C major pentatonic. I think there's an exception towards the end, but a C major pentatonic lick over the C chord. Okay, so. Let me see. Let's do this section a little bit slower. All right. Low tech band today. First lick is just D minor pentatonic, the one here at the 10th fret, pattern number one, if you're scoring at home. One, two, three, four. Pretty self explanatory. Right. Now the next lick over the C chord is a long C major pentatonic encounter, as we'll call it. Comes on the four and. One and two and three and four. Lots of pull-offs, and the pull-off ends in a rest, or a staccato note, perhaps might be a dot over it if you were reading it on paper. And as far as that bend, three and four. You can use, excuse me, you can use your pinky or you could use your ring finger. Three and four. Doesn't matter, but um, you have to get back to make this reach. That's all C major pentatonic. The next lick is a D minor. Starts with a little arpeggio and it winds up with a with a uh, D minor pentatonic scale. And actually the first two are ghost notes. This one comes in on two and, one and two. All right, so the it's like a D minor arpeggio, but the first two notes are kind of ghosted. Right, and the rest is D minor pentatonic, the same scale as the first one. And then, lo and behold, over the C chord, we have yet another uh, C major pentatonic lick. This one comes in on four and. One and two and three and four. Okay, so it's almost like a Dickie Betts thing, right? That's the first part. And then there are five 
plus one note, five of those. Now the picking on those is the same as if I picked it, starting with a downstroke. But you don't want to pick them all. That, that hammer-on, I'm sorry, the pull-off is essential to the sound of it. You can hear the difference. The one you want is with the pull-off. Just like the first part has a, has a hammer-on and a pull-off. Here's the lick one more time. One, two, and three, and four. All right, the next lick is a D minor pentatonic lick, not surprisingly. Three, four. There's a tiny little arpeggio there right at the end, before the last note. Now, this is a lick that I choose to pick backwards. Now, obviously, he's playing with his fingers. So it might look something like this. Right? Might look something like that. But if you're going to use a pick, I start with an upstroke. All of these Chuck Berry style. Rather than try, I can alternate it, but you're reaching around the strings too many times. I don't know if I could do it at this tempo. I think I probably could, but... Well, I did one anyway, but you can see all the extra work involved reaching around the strings and it's hard to be smooth. So I pick that backwards. And then I'm back to the normal picking, but then at the end I sweep that too because it's, it's a lot smoother than trying to, trying to alternate it. Okay, so the next lick is the weird one. Um, it's over the C, and he just does a D minor arpeggio, and I'm, you know, the melody works. I'm not going to, you know, try to second guess him, but it goes like this. It's a D minor and then a B flat arpeggio, even though the C chord had already started happening, right? Um, in other words, when he does three and four... That's a D minor arpeggio, but that last note, the C chord, has already started. Then he does his B flat arpeggio. Same exact lick, except, you, you, again, just like we talked about at the top of the lesson, you raise the fifth of a D minor chord and you get the, the B flat, so it sounds like this. Three and four. Now, the next lick... Finally, that applies to the C chord, right? He's bending into a C note. Right, it's a little tricky, right? A little weird construction. Right, so he bends up to the root of the C chord, and you catch. The, you can use your ring finger. I wouldn't, but um, you hit the third. Then you let the bend down to the B flat, which is the seventh of the C chord, and then he hits a ninth at the end. So it's a dreamy sounding lick, right? Three and four and. All right, so now the arpeggios, and I picked these backwards too for the same reason that I picked the other part backwards, because I don't want to be reaching around the strings. If I were not picking it backwards, it would look like this. And that doesn't sound bad until you, this is, you know, maybe two-thirds speed, you know. So I pick them backwards, which actually might feel weird slow. In fact, I know it's going to feel weird slow. So you can watch the right hand, and you see how I pick it starting on upstroke, and I, and I try to stay on the insides of the strings. Two, and three, and four, and... Okay, so those were the first two, and it's simply a D minor arpeggio, third, root, fifth, and back to the root. Right? Then, again... For the third time in the solo, you raise the A to a B flat. And now we have, just by changing the one note, you have a B flat arpeggio. So there's four of the D minors and then four of the B flats. Well, three plus the last note, right? Two, three, and four, and... B flat. Right? And you stop there because then you have to move and there's two pickup notes on the C arpeggio, and a one, so it's four and a, right? And you get seven plus the last note, right, on the last one. Two and three and four.
right? And then you stop there because this time the D minor gets pickup notes, which it did not have the first time around, but it does the second time around. So I'll start from the C, two and three and four. B flat, C. Now at the end, Same as the first lick, but an octave higher. And then it fades out. So the, theor the theoretical concepts are a lot easier in uh, this portion of the solo than the, than the first solo, which covered the more expansive uh, changes that the verse has. The chorus is just three chords. And the only really weird lick is when he goes B flat, that's the sixth, and now it's C, but he does a D minor and the B flat, and now the... So that's why See, if you sing it over the chords, it sounds kind of weird. So he's playing D minor to B flat like the song kind of did, but those chords had kind of already passed him by. But uh, my old jazz guru, Paul Wingo, said that the melody is the mantra. If the melody works, you know, you don't have to be able to explain it theoretically perfect. So I would probably file this under happy accident if you know how thoughtful Mark Knopfler is when he plays. It was probably just a happy accident and it feels terrific. So would I grab those notes as a first grab? You know, probably not, but he makes it work and I've had accident, happy accidents in the studio that have been worth reproducing later, you know, live, etc. Now notice how that lick where is it? Fits beautifully over the C chord because you're bending into the root to the third, then down to the seventh, and then to the ninth. It's a kind of a dreamy, kind of a jazzy lick. And then, of course, you have the arpeggios that match. So really, you know, it's all about the, the feel. The devil is in the details. I mean, the theoretical concepts are not that difficult. But you want to make it sound pretty, and you do want to understand it because this will help you improvise your own if you choose to do that and and there are many similar progressions to this so there's just a ton to be learned from from both of these solos if you haven't seen my treatment of the first one it's on the channel so please subscribe and i'll see you in the next video